Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Denicia and today's video is titled The Fear of the Lord. So me and my best friend, we were doing Bible study and we were going through the book of Proverbs and we were at chapter one and she asked me a really important question, but I'll read the verse first for you so you can understand where the questions stem. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. So the question she asked me was, Tanisia, what is the fear of the Lord? So I was like, internally I was screaming. <laughs> but then I was like, Holy Spirit, please help me answer this question. Because what? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit reminded me of the sermon that was preached in church where the preacher said there's different types of fear and he said the fear of the Lord is reverential fear. He may be thinking that's a little contradictory. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, it is saying that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and then in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it's saying that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So in order for us to understand what exactly is the fear of the Lord, what is reverential fear, we must understand that there's two different types of fear. Now everything in the kingdom of light that is holiness, that is righteous, Satan tries to emulate and he tries to do everything God is doing but in a very terrible a nasty way so he tries to attack us attack us through our flesh with these four main types of fears the first fear he tries to attack us with is the fear of failure now I can remember sitting and thinking so many times oh my gosh I'm so afraid of the future am I gonna fail I'm, I'm afraid that I won't accomplish all these things I want to accomplish all these things that I feel like make me me I'm afraid I won't be able to accomplish these things but then we as Christians, we must combat these fears with the Word of God. And I immediately was brought to remembrance of my baptism verse, which is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Once I came to that realization, I was like, anything that I put my hands to do, once God is at the center of it and I am in the will and the perfect plan that he has for my life, I will not fail at anything. And if I do fail at something, that means he was protecting me from something and he didn't want me in that situation in the first place. So understanding that the fear of failure is not of God because he doesn't set us up for failure. Let me tell you that. The God who is sitting on his throne does not set his children up for failure. So you get a temporary. <laughs> Do not fear failure. The second type of fear is the fear of nature. Some persons are so afraid of nature. Oh my gosh, climate change, the place is getting hotter. Oh, the place is getting colder. The ice caps are melting. Oh, oh my gosh, this rainstorm is coming. Hail is coming. All these different things. But at first, I I think it's so, so amazing that can be used to come back this spirit of fear as it comes to nature is when Jesus and his disciples were in his book. Verse is Matthew chapter 8 verse 26. He said to them, Why are you afraid? You have little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now, this verse is so important. You have the authority to tell that rainstorm, to tell that climate change, that I I have the authority to tell you to stop. I have the authority to trample over serpents and snakes and all the power of the enemy and all of these different things, all of these, some of these storms, this climate change things, all of these things are of the devil and we have the authority to rebuke it. We have the authority to say, mm -mm, no, no, you cannot do that here. You cannot do that here. We have the authority to command these things. So we must combat these different types of fears with the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. <laughs> the third type of fear is the fear of man. Now so many persons can be afraid of another person. Like 
as a young woman walking through the streets at night which isn't really a smart idea but you can be so afraid someone might take you away someone might kidnap you someone might do some disgusting things to you you know so many different things there's so many different things to be afraid of man someone can just pull out a gun and shoot you but once again we can combat this fear of man with a verse from God's word the verse is Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell so this verse basically tells us that you shouldn't fear man man can kill your flesh but they cannot determine whether you go to heaven or hell they don't get the right to determine that so you should fear the one fear God with reverential fear fear the God that can determine where you spend your eternity with I like to call this life the free trial to eternity because technically it kind of is it's a free trial to the actual real thing so you get the opportunity to choose God so choose God don't fear man because he determines where you go after the free trial okay okay so now that we've gone through the three main types of fears that the enemy uses to attack our flesh with we can now understand what it means to fear God what exactly is reverential fear now reverential fear is when you realize that the God of the universe sent his son on the cross to die for you he humbled himself became man he didn't have to do this you know but he wanted someone he wanted to give us a way to heaven he wanted to give us the opportunity to choose him he didn't want us to go to hell it's he literally doesn't want us to that's why he sent his son he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you and me he wanted to give us the opportunity to say God I choose you you could have easily told me you have to serve me I created you but instead he humbled himself he gave us an opportunity to choose him it, that is so amazing that is so beautiful the God that is so great and so mighty that sits on the throne in heaven above said I am going to give you the opportunity to choose me because I truly care about your feelings and I want you to choose me wholeheartedly I want you to serve me wholeheartedly so now I want you to just ask yourself do you know anyone in your life who would willingly die for you who would say you know what I want to pay for your sins if someone is putting a bullet to your head I would push you aside and take the spot do you know anyone that is willing to lay down their life for you the answer is probably no I mean you might say yes but that person might say no <laughs> but tying this all back to Jesus Jesus died for you Jesus knew you before you were born he said I love you so much I'm gonna give you the opportunity to choose me and I'm going to pay for your sins also I am going to give you the opportunity to, to just drop everything pick up your cross and follow me I'm going to give you the opportunity to really wholeheartedly chase after me I really and truly think that is so beautiful that the God that created heaven and earth would say I want you to choose me I mean I could tell you just choose just just worship me come on man you don't have a choice I created you but it just when I think about it it's just so beautiful that he would say I want you to choose me I want you to open the door for me God is such a gentleman when you think about it he is really and truly so gentle and so kind and so loving he really gave us the opportunity to choose him absolutely mind-blowing so as Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge once we come to this understanding that God has all the authority that he should have free reign in my life that I love him so much I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to chase after him I'm going to understand that he is the God of the heaven and the earth he created all things and he deserves he has the right to reign in my life 
when Solomon wrote this, he truly lived it out. He truly understood what the fear of the Lord was. When we look at his life, he truly humbled himself and he said, God, I'm just a child. I do not know how to be a king. I don't know why these people put me here. <laughs> He's basically said, God, I am a child and I understand that I do not have the knowledge. I don't know how to reign over these people. I don't know how to lead these people down the right path. So I want to humble myself, God. And you asked me to ask you for one thing. So I'm going to ask you for knowledge. I'm going to ask you for wisdom. And that's exactly what Solomon did. He humbled himself before God and said, God, I cannot do this in my own strength. I must depend on you. I need you to guide me. I need you to give me the wisdom to lead your people. And that's exactly what God did for him. God granted him wisdom. And we should aim to be like Solomon. We should humble ourselves before God and cry out to him and ask him for wisdom. And we must also acknowledge him in every single step that we take. And he will direct our path. Okay. <laughs> I want to leave this verse with you and it's very important for us to use the Word of God because when we put on the armor of God, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God and that's what we use to combat the enemy. The, the Word of God is so powerful. So many things happen in the spiritual when you repeat the Word of God. So I want to leave this verse with you that you can use to remind yourself when the enemy tries to attack you with these different types of fear. The verse is Isaiah chapter 4 to 1 verse 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So all in all, the fear of the Lord is reverential fear. I hope you guys would have enjoyed this video and I do want to say Happy New Year. You should be watching this video on the 6th of January. So if you are, smash the thumbs up button and let me know if you like this because in my previous face video that I posted I said I wanted to include more of these types of videos so I'm gonna try to post them a bit more often as the Lord leads so don't forget to like comment and subscribe guys if you would have enjoyed this video and if you want to see some more of me you can follow me on my socials it's underscore N -N -E -C -I -A on Instagram and TikTok and don't you ever forget Jesus loves you bye guys Thank you.